by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. Oh. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real gold power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, She's feeling her Cheerios. Three men talk together in a room in Ma Hanks Henry House Hotel in Modoc City. One was Gopher Gordon, a short, thin-faced man. The second was known as Keo, and the third was Cliff Gunnison. Though Gunnison looked the part of an Eastern gentleman, he and the men with him were members of an outlaw gang led by a ruthless killer named Frosty Ransom. Frosty had been captured by Marshal Jim Fraser, and the problem of releasing him was uppermost in the minds of his followers. Cliff Gunnison held a recent edition of the local newspaper. He read the headline aloud. Hey, hey, listen to this. Marshal Jim Fraser brings Frosty Ransom to Modoc City tonight on the westbound train. That's a doggone tough break for the boss. And if he's tried for murder, he'll probably be sentenced to hang. He always said he wouldn't hang alone. To save our necks, we got to rescue him. Uh, maybe we could get out of the country before he tore. Well, we need cash to travel. And the westbound train bringing Frosty here tonight will have nearly $25,000 in folding money in the express car safe. Frosty's traveling in good company. Yeah, we could use that money. We'll get it, Gopher. How? Oh. Listen, just before the train comes into Modoc City, it climbs a steep grade slowly. Slow enough for us to swing aboard. Hey, I savvy. We'll be halfway up that grade. And as it goes by, we'll climb aboard. It'll be easy to enter the train and move through the car. Right. Keel will cover the marshal and free Frosty. I'll head for the express car and get the cash. What about me? You go through to the engine cab and cover the engineer and the fireman. Well, throwing down to the marshal with a train full of people on hand is a good way to ask for trouble. Well, keep your voice down, your gun out of sight beneath your coat. No one will suspect what's going on. Then force the marshal to come to the express car. I'll be there and I'll have the drop on the express guard. We'll stay aboard till the train leaves Modoc City. We'll get off a short distance from town. Now, Keo will stay with Frosty while Gopher and I come back here to pick up our things. Then we'll rejoin you two and head for the border. We might be able to get away with it, Cliff. Sure we'll get away with it. We'll go to the hillside tonight and wait for the westbound. <laughs> Late that night, a 14-year-old boy named Inky ran from a Henry house to the lighted newspaper office down the street. The mischievous, fun-loving orphan had been adopted several years ago by Tom Brent, 
the owner and editor of the paper. As he entered the office, Inky shouted for his foster father. Tom! Hey, Tom! I'm here, Inky. I hoped you'd be. I have something to tell you. Yes, I have a problem. Huh? I'm going to be mighty busy covering the arrival of Marshal Jim and his prisoner when the train pulls in. Oh, we have a shipment of newsprint and printer's ink coming in on that train, haven't yes, we? that's right. But I'll not have time to claim it. I'll take care of it for you. Well, good boy, Inky. I hoped you would. It'll be in the express car, won't it? Yeah. The ink will be in cans, and the paper will be too heavy for you to move. But I'll make arrangements for the station master ahead of time for unloading them. You just sign for them. <laughs> don't worry about it. I'll take care of everything. You know, I don't know what to do with us, Inky. Your first-rate assistant. I wish you'd let me be a reporter. <laughs> hey, I almost forgot. I have some first-rate news. What kind of news? I heard that the Lone Ranger and Tom uh, are in town. Are you sure? My Hank's houseboy, Ned, told me Scout and Silver are in my stable behind the hotel. I looked, and sure enough, they are. Great day. I wonder what brings the masked man to town. Ned says he's on the trail of Frosty Ranson's gang. Uh, well, that'll really be news if he has a light on those crooks. Where are you going, Tom? Uh, tomorrow's place. I want to talk to the Lone Ranger. He's not in the hotel. If his horse is in the stable, he must be somewhere in town. I'm going to find him. You don't have much time before the train comes in. I know. I'll see you at the station. I'll be there. The Lone Ranger and Tato were in the jail with an old friend they had met on previous visits to town. Deputy Marshal Pete Morgan greeted them warmly. The Lone Ranger explained that he and Tonto had entered the jail from the alley behind the building to avoid being seen by anyone who might question his mask. Then he said, I understand Marshal Jim's bringing Ransom in on tonight's train, Pete. That's right, mister. We might capture the rest of Ransom's gang if they try to rescue their pal. You think they will? Yes, that's why Tonto and I came to Modoc City. Every one of those men should be out of circulation. Hey, what's that? That whistle train. But... Jumping grasshoppers, you're right, Tonto. It's ahead of the schedule. I'd better get to the station, Tonto. You coming, mister? Yes, but Tonto and I'll stay out of sight, Pete. I don't want to alarm anyone who might see my mask. Then let's get going. Meanwhile, Inky was alone on the platform at the railroad station several blocks away. As the train braked to a stop ahead of schedule, he was glad he was on hand early to meet it. He ran along the track past several empty cattle cars to the side of the express car, which was near the far end of the train. As the door on the side of the express car slid back, he shouted, Hi there, Joe! Inky! How are you, lad? Fine. I'm coming aboard. You have a shipment for Tom. That's right. Well, hey, let me give you a hand. You can't climb aboard without help. Thanks. Did you see the banker on the platform? Nope. He should be here to pick up some cash we've brought him. I reckon he figured the train wouldn't be here for another 20 minutes. You're ahead of Tom. Yep, the engineer's a fireballer, all right. Those cans on the floor and the big rolls of paper are for Tom. I know. I... What are you looking for, lad? You're safe. Tom said there was one in this car. It's over here, Inky. But I don't want to open it till the banker comes to pick up the money. You'll open that thing right now. Where are you? Inky and Joe Mercer whirled as Cliff Gunnison entered the express car from another car. The outlaw's face was covered with a bandana, and he held two guns. Now drop that hardware, mister. And you, youngster, get your hands up. Joe, it's a hold-up. That's right. And don't try to call for help. Now you, open the safe and make it fast. You can't get away with a hold-up here. You follow orders or I'll shoot the youngster. Oh, you dirty polecat. I reckon you'd do just that. Joe, are you going to open the safe? I'll have to, lad. Joe dropped to his knees and quickly opened the iron door of the safe. Now bring out the cash. All right, all right. I'll get it. It's in a canvas sack. Yeah, there's the money. But you're loco if you figure you'll get away with it. You'll be seen as soon as you get off the train. You're wrong. But I'll make sure you don't call for help. A rap on the head with my gun barrel will quiet you. Now, both of you lie face down on the floor. Yeah. As he began to obey the command, Joe Mercer suddenly reached for the weapon he had dropped. Ah. Cliff saw the move and fired hastily. Ah. His bullet missed Joe and struck one of the cans of printer's ink on the floor nearby. The sealed can seemed to explode, spraying the car, the stack of money, and the occupants with the thick, penetrating fluid. In the confusion, Inky leaped through the open side door. Help! It's a hold up! Help! Help! Cliff fired again. His bullet grazed the side of Joe's head, and the guard fell to the floor unconscious. Grabbing the sack of money, Cliff moved to the door. 
He heard the voices of excited townsmen approaching the station and feared that his escape would be cut off. Quickly, he closed the door of the car. <laughs> At that moment, Gopher, having heard the first shot Cliff fired, realized his friend was in trouble. He entered the engineer's cab, holding his gun on the engineer and fireman. All right, get this train moving, Pronto. The engineer obeyed, and the train moved out of the Modoc City station. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... When the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Pete Morgan reached the station platform, the train had disappeared into the darkness. Inky ran to meet them. They're getting away! They're escaping! Stop them! Stop them! Stop the train! Well, can we stop them? Without well, horses, we can't overtake the train. Yeah, what are shooting? What happened? Inky, you're covered with ink. Tom, there was a hole up in the express car. Pete! Pete Morgan! What? It's Marshal Jim. Hey, he has Frosty Ransom and another fellow with him. Marshal Jim! If you would get a handcuff on your feet, put him on this critter. He's my prisoner. I have a pair right here, but Ransom's already wearing hands. Put him on his friend. Put out your hands, Keo. Right. What did he do, Marshal Jim? He tried to pull a gun on me to free his pal, Frosty. But I disarmed and arrested him before the train stopped here. Then when I got off the train with the two prisoners, I heard Inky yelling something about a robbery. But the express car was so far from the passenger cars that I couldn't get to it before the train pulled out. The same thing happened to us. The train was on its way before we got to the station. I hope the engineer loses his job for doing a trick like that. He might not have had much choice, Pete. What? Mister, great day. Where'd you and Tano come from? Well, we planned to stay out of sight so no one would see my mask, Marshal Jim. But the excitement and the shooting changed our plan. Well, I'm downright glad you're here. I'm sorry we weren't here sooner. Uh, Inky, you'd better come along to the office and tell us what you know. Yes, sir, Marshal Jim. There's plenty to tell. <laughs> liberal amount of printer's ink that spattered his face and clothing, Inky accompanied the men and the two prisoners to the jail. While Pete put Frosty and Keo behind bars, the 14-year-old boy told what happened in the express car. The next thing I knew, the whole car was sprayed with printer's ink. Hmm. It looks like you absorbed most of it. I wasn't the only one, Tom. Joe and the hold-up man were doused with it, too. The bullet must have struck a can of ink. Would that make it explode, mister? Yes, Inky. It isn't commonly known, but a sealed can full of fluid will blow apart from pressure when a bullet hits it. That's what happened. It blew up all over the place. Can you describe the hold-up man? No, he had his face covered with a bandana. Well, didn't you notice anything special about him, Inky? I, I reckon I didn't, Tom. Except that he was mighty well-dressed. But everything happened so fast, I didn't have a chance to notice much. I hope he didn't kill poor Joe Mercer. If he did, he'll pay for it, Inky. Marshal Jim, the new prisoner, Keo, wants to talk to try to save his hide. Well, what's he got to talk about? He claims two more of the gang are still on the train. One was in the express That's car. That's the one I saw. The other was in the cab with the engineer and the fireman. Oh, that accounts for why the train pulled out of the station in such a hurry. What about it, Marshal Jim? 
You want to hear Keogh's story? Yeah, yeah, Pete. And I'd like the Lone Ranger to hear it, too. Well, Marshal Jim, if you've no objection, I think it might be better if Todd and I followed the train. You can't overtake it now, mister. No, but Ransom's men will probably jump off before the train reaches the next station. There's a bright moon, so we'll be able to watch the ground beside the tracks for footprints. Oh, I savvy your plan. You think you'll be able to find the place where they leave the train, huh? If we do, we'll follow their tracks. Good idea. As soon as I hear what Keo has to say, I'll follow you, mister. Fine. Come on, Toto. We'll go to the Henry House stable for Scout and Silver. You ready? Meanwhile, a short distance from Modoc City, Cliff Gunnison hurried through the empty passenger cars and joined Gopher in the engine cab of the speeding train. As soon as Gopher saw his partner, he exclaimed, Hey, what happened to you? I ran into trouble. You look as if you ran into a barrel of ink. Did you get the cash from the express car? Yeah. Where's Keel? I'll tell you all about that after we get off this train. Tell the engineer to slow down, we'll jump. You heard my friend, mister. Follow orders, or I'll blow your head off. Don't shoot. I'll do as you say. A few minutes later, Cliff and Gopher stood beside the moonlit tracks, watching the train disappear in the distance. When it was out of sight, they took the bandanas from their faces. Cliff explained... The passengers got off the train at Modoc City. And as the train pulled out of town, I captured the conductor. He's tied and gagged in the express car with a guard. The conductor told me that the marshal got Keel. You, you mean Keel didn't free Frosty? Ah, he and Frosty are probably behind bars right now. Marshal got off the train in Modoc City with both of them in custody. Oh, of all the doggone luck. Well, we'll have to go back to town, break them out of jail, Gopher. Why? We've got the cash... Why not keep going to the border? Listen, if Frosty and Keo talk, every peace officer between here and the Rio Grande will be looking for us. As it is, no one on the train saw our faces. If we go back to town, no one will suspect we took part in the train robbery. If you think I'm walking to Modoc City... We'll walk till we come to a ranch. Then we'll steal a couple of horses. And be shot for horse thieves when we stable the horses in town? Oh, no, not we'll me. We'll turn the animals loose when we reach town. Then we'll sneak in the back door of the hotel. Now, come on, I want to get to Modoc City before daylight. <laughs> was after midnight when Inky finished helping Tom get out a special edition of the paper and brought copies to Ma Hank. The huge landlady rewarded him with a heaping plateful of freshly baked donuts and a pitcher of milk. While Inky was eating at the kitchen table, Ma put a supply of donuts and sandwiches into a basket and headed for the marshal's office. Her houseboy, Ned, accompanied her, carrying a pot of steaming coffee. A few minutes later, when Ned returned, Inky was still in the kitchen. Hey, Inky. You look like you're having a hard time keeping your eyes open. I am tired, Ned. Did you hear anything new at the marshal's office? Yeah, Pete Morgan's on duty there. Where's Marshal Jim? I don't know. Pete said he left with the uh, Lone Ranger and Tano. Oh. Pete told us he received a telegram from the sheriff in Big Bend saying that the train reached there a half hour ago. What about Joe Mercer, the express guard? Oh, Joe was wounded, but he'll be all right. Gosh, that's good news. Uh-oh, uh that's one of Ma's guests ringing. I'll go see what he wants. <laughs> When Ned returned to the kitchen, he was carrying Cliff Gunnison's ink-stained boots. Hey, Inky, you want to help me earn a handsome tip? No, thanks, Ned. I'm going home to bed. Well, uh, then I reckon I'll have to work alone. The gent in room number 10 wants these tan boots cleaned. He said if I could get the ink off them, he'd pay me $2. I'll split it with you if you'll change your mind. Hey, let's see those boots. Uh, it'll take a lot of rubbing to clean them up. Wouldn't you wonder how Mr. Gunnison got ink on them? That's printer's ink. It is? Yeah. Hmm. That's curious. Where would Mr. Gunnison get into printer's ink? I know where he got it. He must have been in the express car tonight. Huh? That's the same as the ink I got on my clothes. You're smart, young hey, sir. Hey. The startled boys turned quickly. They saw Cliff Gunnison standing in the doorway. He held a gun in his hands and was followed by Gopher Gordon. I told you you were crazy to ask the house boy to clean those boots, Cliff. He was bound to wonder how you got ink on him. Yeah, you were right, Gopher. You, you're the fellow who shot Joe Mercer. Shut up. Now we'll have to get rid of these kids. And we'd better get them away from here before someone comes in. Someone has come Hey, in. hey what up? those guns. You covered You're both under arrest. Cliff and Gopher turned to see a masked man, an Indian, and Marshal Jim Fraser enter the kitchen. All three men held guns. Hey, what's the big idea? Mister, this is the fellow who shot, robbed the train. He shot Joe Mercer. Yes, I know he did, Inky. You were told to drop your guns. Hey, we're, we're outnumbered, Cliff. We'll shoot our way out. No! 
Good no. shooting, masked man. You wing the pole. My arm! My arm! Do you want the same treatment? No, no, no. no. I, I'll drop my gun. Gosh, you got here just in time. They picked up the trail of these two several miles from town, Inky, and followed it to the ranch where they stole a couple of horses. We followed the horses to town and found the place where these critters dismounted and turned the horses loose. And there they went to the back door of the hotel. And we came in that door just in time to get the skunks. It's lucky for us you did. They might have killed Ned and me. I want to hear all about it, Inky. But first, we'll take these two to jail. After Cliff and Gopher were behind bars, the marshal and the Lone Ranger returned to the Henry house. In Cliff's room, they found the ink-stained sack of money, which Marshal Jim took to his office. Ned and Inky were there. Did you boys give Pete a statement of what happened in the kitchen? They sure did, Marshal Jim. I have it written down right here. Yep. <clears throat> well, here's the money those crooks stole. You stole where? I think so, Pete. As soon as the bank checks it, we'll know for sure. That takes care of Frosty Ransom and his gang. Yeah. Thanks to the Lone Ranger, they'll all be out of circulation from now on. Say, uh, where is the masked man, Marshal Jim? He and Tano left town to go to their camp in the hills. The next time you see him, Ned, you'd better thank him. They saved your life and Inky's, too. I know it, Marshal Jim. And I'm downright grateful to him. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> Inky, you look tired enough to sleep standing up. Why don't you head for home and go to bed, huh? I'm going home all right, Marshal Jim. But when Tom finds out the last two members of the gang are in jail, he'll want to get out another special edition. I reckon you're right, lad. To be sure he gives credit for the capture of those crooks to the Lone Ranger. I don't see Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. True, champions are made, not born. We can all get there if we try. Take champion Doak Walker, flashy halfback for the Detroit Lions. Doak, at the tender age of nine, decided football was his line. He practiced hours day after day and learned what champions have to say. Wheaties for breakfast, you're on your way. Now a touchdown team from top to toe. Walker and Wheaties, they really go. A guy can put away a lot of Wheaties in 18 years, and that's how long Doak Walker's been eating them. Good for you? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Let's go, Doak. Dig for that goal. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.